Dana and welcome back to Tuesday Tips for Leaders of Volunteers. This week we are talking about jargon and how we use language in shorthand and acronyms, not just in our own profession and sector of volunteer engagement and leading community services, but also inside our organization, making sure that other departments understand our definition of what can seem like simple words, like the word engagement. Uh, and also, especially to the outer community, if we're reaching into new neighborhoods or different demographics, or we're uh, opening up shop in a new part of the country or the world, we wanna make sure that how we define our words around volunteer work is, um, kind of resonating or understood or hopefully aligning with the community and the rest of our departments. Now, my favorite example of this is the word engagement and the word volunteer. If you go to ask someone in Ireland what the word volunteer means, that's gonna have a different definition than someone in the United States or Canada or UK or Brazil or Indonesia, because there are local circumstances that help define what that is and what that means. The other side of that, if you use the word volunteer, someone may be coming from a background or a culture where uh, they do community service. They work with their faith groups, they work with their neighborhoods, they work in their um, local areas, and they don't ever call it volunteering. They might have a different word, they might not have a word at all. That's just something that is part of being in their community. So it can be really complicated, and for the sake of Tuesday Tips, I wanna just have us focus on the jargon that we use and being understandable to the people that we want to talk with and persuade to participate in our mission. So even within other departments like education or HR or fundraising or PR and marketing, they will all have their own versions of what engagement means. So if we're talking about volunteer engagement, let's be very, very clear on what we mean by that, what specific actions and steps and outcomes uh, we want using the word engagement. We also have a lot of, just like any profession, a lot of shorthand and acronyms like VMS, Volunteer Management Systems, or in social media, hashtag LOVOLS, Leaders of Volunteers, maybe that's a new one to you. But we want to think about what's the most common denominator of language, especially if we're hoping to communicate to a really, really wide audience. We are just putting something out all the way out into the community for a very, what's called generalized audience. Now, a rule in communication, um, in chime in in the comments if you have uh, things to add to the conversation around this, but a rule in communication is to do the most wide messaging at a sixth grade level or how an 11 or 12 year old or 13 year old person who speaks the language that you're communicating in would be able to understand that. And I've had this conversation within agencies that I've worked for and with clients that I have around, oh, we don't want to dumb down our messaging. It's like, well, one, calling it that is its own ableist and classist label that we hopefully can stay away from, but it also means that we are actually being smart about how we're using language for a general audience that may be of different ages, of different language levels, and whatever language we're communicating in, it doesn't have to be English. So it's really about accessibility and ease of understanding. When we are talking to a very specialized professional audience like other leaders of volunteers at a conference, yes, our jargon is gonna come into play. We're gonna have shorthand, we're gonna have our own words for complicated ideas squished down into one word. That's true in conservation, in academics, in teaching, in engineering. All professions kind of have their own jargon. Uh, one thing that I've noticed in the last 18 months or so, 2020 and 2021, is a lot of people are afraid to speak up that they don't understand tech jargon as we've shifted to an online remote work style and volunteering style and teaching and learning style for uh, safe distancing from each other. 
There are acronyms uh, that someone who's worked with a certain tech platform or has been in a communication or technology industry online a lot, they may just be throwing out a bunch of acronyms that the general audience and even the users don't understand. And that can be frustrating and confusing and really a barrier to someone engaging with the work that we're doing and using what's called a CTA, call to action to use and define one acronym to get them more involved with our work and our mission as members of the community. A great example is how C-suite nonprofit directors and the philanthropy fundraising community and leaders of volunteers, the volunteer and community service professionals communicate with each other. And again, back to this definition of the word engagement. So we found um, with research recently, this is through National Alliance for Volunteer Engagement, which is kind of an umbrella group and also MAVA, Minnesota Alliance for Volunteer Advancement and some other organizations have done some really interesting research and had some conversations lately around how asking for grant funding to a funder you might not get in their grant requirements that oh this must mention how you are engaging volunteers or doing community engagement or how uh, volunteers are building capacity it may not ask to include that language therefore that language is not in the grant so what we found in these communications is that in these surveys that the c-suite thinks that funders aren't asking for anything to specifically define volunteer engagement and resourcing that, which is important. Funders have said, nobody's asking us for those words. So we assume that everything that we're funding includes volunteer engagement. So even these, these tiny misunderstandings can have huge ripple effect on budgets and how many people are working in the department of volunteer services and how that's resourced. And that in turn snowballs into the effectiveness and the capacity of any nonprofit organization or government organization to do their mission most effectively. So it's a small change that you can make in using more clear language, more common terms, and just making sure that you're saying what you want and need, especially in a grant application or some other kind of form, and never assuming that a definition, especially around volunteers or funding, is included in what you are saying. So to use an idiom, jettison the jargon, use very clear language whenever possible. And if you are falling back into habits of a lot of acronyms and shorthand and words that you're pretty sure you know the definition to and you're making an assumption that someone else has the same definition, it's like mm, maybe just uh, check in about that as much as you can with your peers inside your organization and your agency and especially uh, important to tailor communication and messaging to the audiences that we're hoping to reach and that we're hoping to call to action in our work. So I hope you enjoyed this week's Tuesday Tips more on the way and don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you know when our my newest videos are coming up we'll see you soon